Welcome back, my fellow Ninjineers. This is Professor H with another networking video. We are going through part two of flows and flow tables as promised. Now, last time we talked about the different kinds of tables that we see in networking, and today we're going to tackle the flow table itself seen on OpenFlow enabled devices. So, without further ado, flow tables part two. Now just a couple of reminders before we get started. Remember that the OpenFlow channel is established between the controller and the switch. And that's actually where we exchange the OpenFlow messages. They're not seen out on the network. They're seen between the controller and the switch. So we're also dealing with messages that are compliant with a particular OpenFlow protocol version. And there's a couple of ways you can run this. The OpenFlow messages are the messages that we covered in the last couple of videos. So we did, you know, the asynchronous and the symmetric and the uh, controller to switch messages. And so they all have their own reasons for being there, their own place in the universe. Uh, but those are all seen on those or on that OpenFlow channel. Now, in this particular topology, we're dealing with OpenFlow version 1.3. So my discussion is about OpenFlow 1.3, but you might see a various, you know, a variation in that because the captures that I've posted for you and the ones that I used in the videos are actually from an OVS implementation that uses the OpenFlow spec version 1. Not a big difference, just changes to some of the messages that are available, so not a big deal. But so I just wanted to point that out to you. Now, one other thing I like to do before we get started here is sort of step back and say, what's the point? What are we doing here? Well, remember that open flow enables switches on the network and it sees all of this traffic. And in an SDN based network, we're populating the open flow table. But how are we doing that? Well, in the example that I ran, it's just a layer two learning switch, but it's not allowed to learn until the controller says it's okay. Now, that means that there's this controller in the loop that has control over the traffic, and we might call that a controlled SDN topology. Now, that's not always the way it has to be. You can do manual entries in an OVS open flow table. And so there's a couple of ways to approach your SDN topology, but I just want to sort of step back and, and and realize that the whole point of what we're doing is so that we can establish those flow table entries to enable network traffic. What we do with the traffic, how we manage our network, that's a whole different animal. And that brings up the whole point of SDN, being adaptive and dynamic, rather than the, the static approach to networking that we've always taken. Now, you may recall that last time, if you watched the videos, I showed you ARP tables and host routing tables and router routing tables and SATs and all that. This was the teaser that I gave you for the OpenFlow flow table. This is one entry in the OpenFlow table. So all of those fields are part of one entry. So you'll notice that it's more complex than any of the other tables that we've seen so far. I got this by sitting on my OpenFlow enabled switch, OVS, and running OVS off control dump flows BR0. That's not dump flows, bro. That's BR0. It's just the font we're using here. And the one thing that I've highlighted in this particular table entry is that this is table zero. And that'll become important to us here in a second. Now, the reason that I circled or put a rectangle around table zero is that each switch has to have at least one table and they start numbering at zero which makes sense if you've been around computers at all we always start counting at zero so that was table zero all of those entries were in the only flow table that existed on that particular switch now packets come into the switch and they're matched against the flow table entries so what's happening is that in our topology the open flow enabled device sees the traffic says to the controller hey i got this what do you want to do about it and the controller and the switch have a conversation and after that they they add the flow table entries to the open flow table on the switch if there's no match makes sense right we we have a table miss usually that means that the t that the uh, the packet is discarded so that also means that from a performance perspective 
when you have table entries that are in the middle of updating, while that's happening, the traffic is not forwarded. Now we have wildcards. Uh, in fact, a table miss is a wildcard of entry um, all zeros. Priority is a priority of zero is the lowest possible priority and constitutes a table miss. If a packet matches more than one entry, the highest priority is selected. So let's take a look at our packet processing. This is right out of the OpenFlow spec, and you can see that you can chain tables together. So even though you may have passed the entries in table zero, you might be passed on to table one and so on and so forth until you've matched all of the table entries. In our particular case, we only have one table. And there's the instructions for what happens. But in a nutshell, you come in, you look for the table entry that matches, you select if there's more than one match, the highest priority, and then you look at the actions to decide what to do with this particular packet. So if you're okay so far, keep going and we'll tackle the, the table entries that we looked at earlier on. Now this shows us, again, right from the specification, the general contents of every particular table entry in an OpenFlow device. Match fields, priority counters, instructions, timeouts, and the cookie. So that's the general rule. So let's first take a look at the match, because that's the first thing that you have to do. Now the match is, uh, the match criteria will include the ingress port, the packet header, and then optional metadata if there was another table or tables involved in this. In this particular case, we don't have that. We just got one table. So the last bullet here is the match criteria. You can see that it's ARP, the port that it came in on, and then all of the stuff that goes along with this particular packet. We can see that because this is ARP, we've got a source and destination MAC address that we're dealing with here. And then in the ARP message, not the IP header, but in the ARP message, we have the, the two IP addresses involved. And then the operation code for ARP. Now you might ask yourself where this comes from. In this case, because there's no IP header, the fact that we know this is ARP came from layer two, the, uh, the Ethernet control field. In many other cases, you're going to be dealing with the protocol ID field in the IP header. So if we keep going, there's our priority. Again, I pulled this right from the entry at the beginning of the video. This priority is 65,000. So we can see that this is a pretty high priority and that makes sense. I mean, it's ARP traffic you want it to get through. Another set of entries that you see are the counters there. Now there are three that I've listed here, again, pulled from the entry. Now there are lots and lots and lots of counters that are available to implement in an OpenFlow topology. Per flow, per port, per table, per queue counters are all available. Each kind of counter, so if we're looking at flow table entry counters, some of them are required, some of them are optional. The one that I've underlined here is a required flow table uh, counter, and it's the duration of this flow because eventually flows age out in a table. And then in this particular implementation, there are a couple of optional ones here. We're counting the number of packets and the number of bytes. Okay, so closing out uh, the last couple of entries, we got just a couple more fields to go here. The timeouts. How long do I hang on to this particular flow table entry? And you can see that we've got these particular values that are included in our flow table entries. And so this is on OBS in this particular version. Got an idle timeout of 10 seconds, right? I haven't heard from you. The uh, And then once you hit that 30, you're gone. Now, the, the cookie is just a value that is given to each particular flow table entry. So it's not used in forwarding. It's not part of the match criteria. But if you give a command like get rid of this flow or add this flow, it's got to have a cookie match. Now, last up is, okay, I've had a match, what do I do with it? And that's the instruction header, or the instruction field in the flow table entry. So this is where we actually decide what to do with the, the packets. In this particular case, this flow table entry said, here's what I want you to do. Your action equals output colon one. And what that means is that the output 
port to be used for this particular message is port 1. So that means send it out port 1. Each flow table entry has something that you're supposed to do with it when you match. This is no different than anything else you've ever looked at. If you've looked at ACLs and routing table entries, when we have a match, we have to do something. In the case of uh, security implementations, it might be that you deny or permit the packet. If it's quality of service, you're allocated a certain amount of bandwidth. So this is what we do when we match the flow table entry. Now, just like the counters, there are some required action types that have to be supported. Makes sense, right? Forwarding, for example, or output. Uh, and then there are some optional ones. And I've just given you some lists there. Again, the standard has a lot of possibilities here, but there are some required and optional ones that are available. The actions can actually be put into a list. You can have a series of things that you're supposed to do with a particular uh, flow table entry on match. And this is just sort of the, the way that they're processed. They're done in order, so you get this list and you just follow through the list doing all the things that you're supposed to do. Again, required and optional types. I, I guess I'll add a comment here. The reason that, that we have multiple kinds of action, I mean, it's not just a forwarding thing, is because Sometimes you have protocols that are doing more than just forwarding traffic. There are decisions to be made. For example, MPLS might be not just forwarding a packet, but you might be add or, adding or subtracting uh, tags from the MPLS label stack. And that's just an example of something that you might actually have to do. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there are a couple of other tables involved in open flow enabled topology the group table packets can match one particular flow entry or a flow entry can be installed that matches a bunch of types of packets so that's what your wildcards are all about the group table is the same sort of idea i might have group entries for example if you're multicasting how would you handle that? That's not to any particular node. So a group table allows us to sort of group packet types or flow types together. The processing is handled in much the same same way. You have match criteria and, and then you decide what to do. Meter table is another table that's involved in this. The cool thing about the meter table is that it's quality of service. So there's all kinds of ways of measuring your flows, how many packets per second, bandwidth, all these kinds of things, just a pile of them. And your meter table allows you to control those flows based on the meters that you set up. Again, same idea. You've got match criteria, and then what are you going to do with this particular flow after you're done? Now, differentiated services or diff serve is the common way that we handle this in uh, networks today if you own the entire network you can tell your routers to control traffic in a particular way so the meter is how open flow tables and open flow enabled devices handle that well we've gone on for quite some time here but i think that'll do it for open flow tables part two i hope this helped uh, don't forget to subscribe and like if if that's the case I'm not sure what we're going to do next, you know, we'll pick something and fool around with it. I'm sure if you've got any ideas, send them to me. A lot of you have been sending me email, so that's very, very cool. Remember that I've got the OpenFlow packet captures and packet captures for VoIP and some of the other things that we've done out on BruceHarpence.com. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.